Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing day. Today I'm going to show you a selection of images I captured several months ago with my old Canon 80D and the EF 100mm macro lens. I also had the Nisi 58mm and the Raynox DCI 250 close-up lenses attached or stacked for a maximum magnification of approximately 3x. Even though I've been mainly shooting with my Canon R7 and the Lao 190mm ultra macro lens with the newly released 9 diopter Nisi 49mm close-up lens, looking back at these shots, I'm still quite happy with the overall image quality. Anyway, let's have a look at what species I captured and I will briefly talk about each. Our first species is a plant hopper that most likely belongs to the genus Platybrachis. I have seen gum tree hoppers at the local reserve several times before, but this was unique because of its coloration and interesting patterns that you can see in this first high angle shot that was taken at a lower magnification. I was a bit apprehensive about getting too close because they can be quite skittish and jump away very quickly and unexpectedly. This second stacked portrait from the side contains only two layers, while for this third image I had to blend five individual images for the final frame. This next close-up shot is stacked as well, I captured four photos for this one. This is a leafhopper, but not sure of the species unfortunately. Those massive compound eyes and the veins on its wings look really fascinating. Our next subject is a rather large mite I spotted on the bark of a eucalypt that belongs to the genus Rainbowia that was named after William Rainbow, who was an entomologist at the Australian Museum in Sydney in the 19th century. Immature nymphs can parasitize insects, and as adults they are predators of other small arthropods. I really love the coloration and the shiny metallic sheen of its body. The red eyes are somewhat discernible, and those massively long legs help them move around quite quickly on substrates. The next two shots are of a large spotted ladybird. This first stacked image that consists of five layers shows the larval stage of this species and the second shot is of its pupa. I found this one in our garden, not so far from where plenty of larvae were foraging. This high magnification image was created from 10 layers. This following species is one of my favorite signal flies called a boatman fly. The way it moves its wings around resembles a paddling movement which looks quite funny. I really like the rich vibrant color of its eyes as well. I will try and record some footage one day. The next two images are of a crane fly that belongs to the genus Leptotarsus. I really like the angle of the first one but it moved around so I could only capture a single shot whereas the depth of field was slightly increased for this subsequent image that contains three individual layers. This quirky, rather cute looking subject that I spotted on moss was relatively small and didn't stop for a moment. This common peel wood lass plays an important ecological role as a pest control agent and also contributes to overturning soil and producing compost. The next three images are of a hoverfly species that belongs to the genus Melangina. These halfbands have enormous compound eyes, just like bees and some wasps, and by mimicking them, they can avoid potential predators. I was quite happy with this last in-flight capture that shows a bit of movement in the wings. Our second last subject is a cute garden jumping spider that I found on the leaf of a eucalypt. It had captured what most likely was a non-biting midge, I believe, and for a brief moment, it also jumped onto my finger while still hanging on to its delicious spray. I left an interesting jumping spider portrait for last. This close-up shot of a male bronzehopper was taken at the local reserve as well. And what was interesting about this, if you look closely, you can see a different spider species hiding in a retreat that most likely was a venomous sex spider. Their bite usually only causes local swelling and pain, but sometimes skin ulceration can occur too, which happened to me once in Hungary when a similar species bit me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Also feel free to leave your feedback. I'm always happy to read your comments. You might also want to check out these videos next. Thanks again and catch you all very soon in the next one.